if your primary responsibility includes designing intervention to reduce poverty, see what you think about this new approach that I've come up with. Hello and welcome to Dev TV. At Dev TV, we profile ideas, innovations, and individuals doing amazing things in economic development. This is a monologue. As, this monologue is a continuation of what we started several videos ago, where we're discussing how to make interventions, how to make economic development a bit more entrepreneurial. And this is what this video is about. We're, mov we're moving uh, forward. So as I mentioned in my last video, I, had, I have uh, come up with a, uh, a canvas, a tool that is based on Alex Ozawalda's uh, business generation model, business model generation canvas. Um, I've based this tool on it uh, with the hope that we can use it in economic development to begin to generate uh, good interventions or design good intervention that will be a lot more impactful and uh, entrepreneurial in our approach to uh, what we do in, in, in economic development. So what I thought I would do first, though, is actually to show the context of uh, this, uh, this, this tool that I have developed. Essentially what it is, I, I've called it intervention generation model, no, intervention model generation canvas, a mouthful I know, but I'll probably reduce that to say uh, intervention model canvas. So the idea is that this canvas presents the whole intervention in one, uh, in, in one canvas so everybody can see exactly how everything fits in and it would then be easier to tweak the, uh, the, the, uh, the intervention to, to suit uh, um, any particular challenges that we may, uh, we may come across uh, in designing the intervention. But what I thought I ought to do first is actually to show you how all of this fits into the market systems. So for those that are not in economic development, this would be a, a, a nice gentle introduction into, uh, into market systems development. So in, the, in what you see, in the canvas that you see, um, uh, on the screen, we have three elements to this. So we have the market system, exactly what we, how we view uh, the economically active poor in in uh, economic development, and the next one is the is the nine element business model canvas that Alex Ozoalda had uh, developed, and the one next to that is the intervention model generation canvas that I have I have uh, put together. And the, the whole idea is that I want to introduce how all of this fits together and hopefully get your opinion on the intervention model canvas to see how we can make it better and make it work. Uh, and as a matter of fact, you, we even discuss whether or not it's necessary to develop uh, an intervention model canvas. So market systems then. So the way we view uh, uh, markets and economy uh, is, or any value chain, any industry is that uh, there are three components. There's the core economic activity. There's a supporting function for those economic activity and activities. And then there's the rules and uh, government policy that governs the performance of those economic activities. We believe in market systems or in economic development that the poor are continuously engaged in some sort of economic activity. It is just that they are not able to improve or increase the level of income that they get from the uh, economic activity that they're involved in because the supporting function is not working for them and the rules is not working to support to support them so that's essentially the thrust of the uh, of the principle behind market systems but obviously uh, there's a whole lot more to it but that's the overall um, that's the overview of what we believe in market systems. So what are the supporting functions then? Supporting functions are, as you can see in my, in my drawing here, uh, the dollar sign um, is financial institution. Uh, this is a road. I know it doesn't look like it. So that uh, represents infrastructure. Um, the I, it's information. Uh, and then we have technology, research. Um, and there are other things like um, accounting, uh, uh, law, 
all sorts of different things, lawyers and all sorts of services that uh, you can bring into your economic activity uh, to help you grow the economic activity so you can earn a whole lot more money from it. So we believe that some of these things are not accessible, are not available, are not affordable to the economically active poor, and that's why they remain poor. And some government policies may have started off with good intention, but sometimes they don't actually deliver on what um, uh, uh, they're supposed to deliver, uh, be it because of the way they're, they're, they're implemented or some sort of uh, external forces that basically distort uh, the, the performance of, of these uh, government policies. Some regulations have been there for generations and are not suited for the way uh, business are done in the present day. So all of those things we really need to try and evaluate. So this is how we see uh, um, market systems, or that's, this is how we see how the poor, economically active poor, fits into a market systems. So our primary job then is to make sure, in economic development at least, is to make sure that all of the supporting functions are model that they operate uh, are inclusive of the poor or the marginalized um, groups. So that's essentially where the business model canvas comes in. And what Alex has done is design this canvas to have nine elements, nine key elements that really pulls together a really good business model. And it's a communication tool and it's a clarity tool. What it does, it allows you to see the entire business model in one canvas. So you can see what works together, what doesn't work together, and you can tweak it as things go along. And it is really wonderful too when you have a group of people that are really attending their mind to a particular business, business model. Um, and it is in the tweaking of all of the business models that we begin to have an effective uh, communication or an effective business model that can be inclusive. So in economic development then, our job is to make sure that the business model that the supporting functions and the rules operate in are inclusive of the poor. So we have to be really good. In order for us to be entrepreneurial, we have to be good at generating, generating inclusive business models. Now, there's, there's then a separation between generating the inclusive business model and the intervention model. Let me explain. It is often the case that in market systems, it is not just one area that is putting downward pressure on, on the income that e economically active poor generate in their activity. It is often the case that you can have a problem uh, assessing finance, the infrastructure uh, to get your whatever it is that you're, 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 you're doing in your economic activities, activities to get it to uh, the, the, the market can be problematic information about prices, quality, information about potential inputs that you can use to make sure that your economic activity thrive and meets the requirement, all of that might not be accessible to you as an economically active poor. And research, technology may not, you may not have access or cannot afford, or even the technology might not be even available uh, that your not so poor um, counterparts can can get good access to. So it then means that we in economic development have to have a portfolio of business models, inclusive business model, and how we integrate those business model and how we combine all of that in the intervention we design is what uh, the intervention model canvas presents. It essentially presents the uh, business models and the layers of the business models, uh, it presents it in, in one big canvas so we can see how each of these things relates uh, with, uh, with each other. Each of the business models relates with each other so we can see whether or not we're meeting the primary objective. Now, this is where I need your, your view and opinion. This essentially is an idea that I am pushing 
It is, uh, it's a canvas that I have designed and I'm hoping that we can make it a lot better if we work together on this and hopefully people will be able to apply this into their work and, and make economic development a bit more entrepreneurial. Now, this here is my intervention generation canvas. I apologize for the terrible drawing and terrible handwriting, but I thought I ought to start with this. So um, uh, my hope is that when I do get conversations going, we can begin to tweak this as we go. So what I think I also do is to really um, talk through the elements of the, of, the, of the canvas. So as you can see here on the screen, the first part of the canvas is the uh, is target constraints and root causes. So what are the problems that we're trying to resolve? What are the layers what are the different portfolios that we're trying to pull together? So it might be finance, it might be uh, finance and technology, finance and information, uh, uh, finance and markets, whatever it is, uh, we, we, we write this down or we put, we put it here on a, on a sticky tape. And then we need to profile the beneficiaries. Now, profiling beneficiaries here is essentially adopting the, the business model canvas approach to profiling customers. So that means what exactly is it that the, the, the beneficiaries are trying to get done? What are the pain points that really uh, they're trying to resolve? And what are the things that they're trying to gain? So those are the three areas of the value propositions that we need to do when we're, when we're thinking about profiling, uh, profiling the, the, um, the beneficiaries. Now, the third element here is the expected behavioral change. Very often when we do interventions, we expect somebody to change behavior. We expect the partner to be uh, inclusive in its business model, in its business practices and business activities. We expect, sometimes we expect the beneficiaries themselves to either increase the level of investment, meaning buy a bit more input to make sure that it can get a bit more output. So what is what are the expected behavioral change? We need to include that in, 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 in the canvas. So it can either be action or spend put here. So spending here means investment. Now, the next column down is project relationship with beneficiaries and partners. Now, it is important for us to know this up front when we're designing the intervention. How often do we need to engage with a partner? How often we need to engage with the beneficiaries? What sort of relationship do we need to have with them? Is it that we we'll continuously do things together, which is likely with a partner, and the beneficiaries will only come into 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 our circumference when when we need to talk to them, when the partners need to go and sell to them, or do we need to engage with them from the start and continuously? throughout the uh, the intervention. So that's what that, that is. And then we have channel. How are we going to reach the beneficiaries and how are we going to reach, uh, reach, the, reach the, um, uh, the partners? So, and please do not forget, in, uh, in all of this, we're, we're thinking about the beneficiaries and the partners. Now, the next uh, uh, box down is the intervention value proposition. What exactly is our intervention? And what does it address? And how does it address the profile issues that we have listed out for the beneficiaries here? And don't forget, we need to make sure the, um, the partner, the value proposition for the partner, uh, we need to address his own gain and his own pain and his jobs that he's trying to do. So we need to pull all of that together uh, here. So we need to be very clear what the value proposition is to the partner, what the value proposition is to the beneficiary. Now, this is particularly important, and I, and I, I think we very often um, overlook this quadrant where uh, it's behavioral change triggers. So partners, we expect the partners, for instance, to either increase the level of investment or change the way they package something or be a bit more uh, involved in the way they relate with their suppliers if their suppliers are the poor. So we expect them to, to change, to do something. So, But we need to be very clear that incentives in itself, by itself, does not work. 
Uh, you tell me what is good for me to do, it doesn't mean that I will do it. But what you might do that will help is if you can identify what triggers or what will trigger me to take the action that you require me to take. We can talk more.